anyway. Anyway, you come over here and you got, you know, it's all fenced off right here because I realized the computer guys are getting stuck right here. Because they're idiots, you know. So I, I put a bit of barriers here that you, go, you couldn't get around, you know. Anyway, um, come up on here. And uh, this is the only way in, once again. But your, your main goal when you're building your villages is honestly do not give people many options to get in. Funnel them. If you've ever seen that movie 300, think about that. They had to come down a thin corridor to attack, and that was their best defense, right? Think about that when you're building all your villages. Build one of those little narrow corridors where people got to come in to attack you. So um, here was my idea of how I did mine. Uh, there's only one way in up here, coming that main way that we just came in. And I got a nice little walkway set up, some uh, little tours or uh, turrets, guard posts. Um, I have my guards always set up with some gear that way they're protected anybody that's elevated I always make sure they got some sniper rifle of some kind that way they'll stay back and shoot if you ever pay attention and help the game fight when your villages get attacked they'll run off and like get up in their faces if they don't have ranged weaponry so you want to give them something that's pretty ranged keep them back from the fight pretty much let your turret guns do everything don't let your villagers get involved um you come up here this is the the shot to the shot of the Fortress of Solitude of Darth Drake. Cool here for old Clementine, my second character. Said so we're gonna go load up my third character here momentarily and really get into some crazy stuff. This was I was mid learning how to do all this stuff, so imagine what I do with my last character. But anyway, you come into here and this is pretty cool, I think. Um, I got my line saying what's up, but once again, this is the way that enemies be coming in. So if enemies even think about, it, there's no entrance in the bottom there. I'll show you that other one. Um, there's no way down in from the bottom here. It's the only way in is up top. You got to come up this way. So this whole way, you just got turrets galore. I got a guy patrolling up there, as you see. I mean, there's really no way in. You have your spotlight set up so that it'll uh, trigger the alarms when people roll in. That's how you do. But anyway, as soon as you come in here, you see I got a trip, trip laser wire right there. We'll get a little flamethrower. Oh, and what's that right behind you? You got a shotgun. So. You're going to be getting toasty on one side and old booga booga up on the other side. And that, nope, nobody, nobody's going to survive that. But anyway, you come in and this is my village, my little farm area. Um, I made a giant fortress of solitude. <coughs> Shut your mouth, Kate. I'll be smacking you around, you wee lass. Um, Kate is my, is my girl. So uh, she rolls around Hugh Hefner style. I'm going to give you some mute fruit. Um, she rolls in a robe. It's an armored robe. Um, she's protected. Just in case nothing gets in here. Nothing has ever attacked this place and made it through this trip. This this laser wire has never been set off by an enemy. I can guarantee you that. No one's ever got in here. But anyway, when you come in, you see I have an entire village set up. Um, right here. Did you just get in? There we go. See my production level. Um, people 25. My food, water, power, defense is insane. Um, they're not happy because nobody's ever happy in this game unless you're around them at all times. They're like a bunch of children. Daddy's gone. They can't be happy. Ooh. Anyway, um, <clears throat> the key to having your happiness way up is you got to be around in case you didn't know that. Um, have your shops, have a clinic, have a trader, a trader, a trader shop, um, the, tr the goods person. Uh, the clothing also increases um, happiness. If you notice, this is my shopping area. Let me start over here. I'm sorry. I'm kind of skipping ahead. When you first come into here, we're going to make a right. You saw the tripwire. I have beds laying all around the ground. Like, people don't need much. They're happy with just a cot like that. As long as there's a roof over their head, which that's technically a roof, um, they're fine. So I have all the beds spread out here on this first level all the way around the Schneerzen. Um, this is another entrance that I built in because the guys were honestly getting stuck and couldn't figure out how to get in and out in here and it was making me angry production levels and everything was fine but my ocd was kicking in and it was making me mad so i built this other way in much against my wishes because i only wanted one way in but now technically there's two um good luck getting in on this way either though i have turrets i mean you see you come out here and snares and oh, let's go you come out here and this is turret central i got a turret looking at you there i like to use the doorways like you see up there and put a turret in the doorway instead of using it as a doorway in the upper levels because then as you see you still have your walls around it but then it still has its little angle and it can schnars whatever's coming up the veneers in. um come in trip wire giggity giggity um this is my my area my darth area got all the bobbleheads 
giggity giggity. I can show you where all they're all. Blah, blah, blah. I can show you where they are all at. Pretty simple stuff. Um, I always have all my benches. I use the work weapons and uh, armor bench the most, so I keep those right there. This is my bathroom area. We need some privacy. It's about the best we can offer in post-apocalyptic world, but it's pretty good. Um, if you're looking for some reading, here's 99% of all the magazines. So I have all the books set up right here. You can come up, grab a book off the rack. I'm only missing one. Grab a book off the rack and, uh, you know, go in and handle your business or, you know, whatever you got to do. Anyway, so you come over, you gotta have a jukebox jamming out, and then this is, I feel like Iron Man when I come in here, to be honest. This is all my suits of choice. Um, some of the paint jobs that you can have, various models. Um, that one's the hot pink. You have to get a specific magazine for that one, a hot rodder. You must find that hot rodder magazine, right, Shaw? Hot pink, and you get that one. Um, the one beside it, the flame job, that's how you get that one, I believe. Yep, that's the Atom Cats. That's the flame job. That is the Minutemen, once you become friends with the Minutemen and they like you enough. Or that's Brotherhood of Steel, I apologize. Once you become friends with them enough, they Brotherhood of Steel your face. This is the shark one. This is my favorite one. This looks sick. Like, on the X one, that looks so sick. Look at that. That's pretty cool. If you haven't painted your joint like that, that's a pretty cool looking one. And then the Atom Cats. That's just my five I keep. I literally have power armor at every civilization. That way, if the town gets attacked, they can they can jump in and roll around and fight in it. And you'll see that they will because, just like children, they don't know how to put anything back where they found it. <laughs> and you'll find it laying around in some pretty obsequious places. Um, so as I was saying before, I roll over here, then we have our shops. Again, I have beds littered everywhere. They just kind of blend in. Um, there's a scavenger, Fnirzen. Um This is my second character, so all of my shop people wear fancy attire. This is what I started with this guy, so that way I knew who they were, even after hours. My doctor is always in a clinic coat, so I always got a sea captain's hat and eyeglasses. Why I associate that with that, I don't know. I grew up watching Gilligan's Island, and that's what the doctor looked like, so I don't know. Anyway, product of the 80s. Anyway, so, you know, I have all my vendors right here, and then I have a caravan vendor fneers and set up. Um, once you get cool with Bunker Hill, which is where all of these vendors come from, the main vendors, the traveling supply caravan fneersons, um, they give you the option to build one of these devices here so that they will randomly stop. It's awesome to have because then you're guaranteed to know where they're at every time, and they do stop on a more f uh, higher frequency. In a frequency that doesn't make sense. Like, Doc Schneerzen's here, all of a sudden fast travel, like, back to Sanctuary, and then he's there, too. It's like, how did you... Hmm. It's like Flash Gordon, but anyway. Maybe Nightcrawler. Hmm. X-Men Apocalypse coming soon. Anyway, uh, so my doctor, my general trader, the general traders, the doctors, the clothing, all increase happiness in your civilization. Um, if you notice I'm missing one vendor, my bar. I'll show you why. I always separate the bar because if you notice after hours people congregate to the bar. I like to set up a sweet little place for all my dudes to hang out. So anyway, um, I made this a second level establishment in here. Um, <coughs> without, a, without a floor on the second floor. Just so that there's a lot of space. If you notice the shops take up a lot of room in the top part. A lot of overhang. So I gave them plenty of space. Anyway. That's almost everything. You could have left it with that, but no, old Darth Dracul had to, being Darth, had to add a bathroom. I mean, where's everyone going to go to the bathroom? All right, so let's let's be for real. Plus, I needed my generators set up somewhere and safe. So what I did was I removed this wall so you could see. I had my generators set up. There's three of them right. Um, I just put another wall there when I need to. And then also behind these are my other jetties back here. And there you go. <coughs> this is their bathroom. Little bathtub setup. Another one right there. Just like in the uh, in my bathroom. They got stall doors separating them. America. Remember when you're when you're going to the bathroom, you're still in America. Anyway, um, I even have a bed or bed set up in here just for one lucky soul to sleep in the bathroom. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there's no need to build that. That's just me being me. Um, anybody that plays with me knows I'm a goofball. And follow me enough, visit my website, www.planetschnars.com, you'll realize I'm a goofball. Anyway, you come up, chomp. So we come up right above the bathroom now. Um, I have a little 
I have a secondary bar, actually. This is, check out Chicky. She's scrubbing the bar down, make sure it's all clean like no one wants to drink from a dirty bar. But uh, you come on up, um, and I have a nice little lounge area set up. No one can get up here and get jiggy with it. TV to watch. Um, the terminals I'm going to show you here. What is important to do, tie everything into one network. Pretty much think of it like one wired network. I know everything's wireless nowadays for you young kids. Hard to imagine, but back in the day, everything was wired and everything was connected. And you're tripping over wires everywhere. But anyway, wire everything together and you'll notice, okay, optical sensor. I can now control my trip mines. Um, you can set your trip mines to... Disarm them all, arm them all. And you can also go into the trigger on anything, trigger on hostiles. This is key. Make sure you're always set to trigger on hostiles or it is just default set to trigger on anything. Don't even waste your time with the trip wire, uh, with the laser trip wire um, until you have this set up because they just, uh, it'll kill your own villagers. Like I've literally, my first run through, I'm like, why do my guys keep dying? My traps were killing them. So, make sure you set it up, trigger on hostiles. Don't kill your own villagers. That's how they get really mad at you, I've found out. You live, you learn, you know what they say? Anyway, um, you can also control your switches. All of the posts that you put up that control your electric conduits, some of them can have switches on, switches off. You can man you can uh, override all of those from here and just switch all of them off. Um, there is practical uses for those people. If you YouTube and Google and Fnirzen, you'll find some people found some clever uses for them. I just don't really see the need, to be honest. Like I said, I stick with the funnel technique and bring everyone into one area and then build your wonderland around that. As long as people are getting funneled into one cohesive area, you're, you're fine. Um, your turrets also, you can activate, deactivate, and system diagnostics. I have 14 units connected, as you can see. That's just crazy. I have a couple turrets here and there. Let's see, I thought I froze the game up with all my turrets. So you see that it tells you they're all online, tells you how far away they are from you, which is kind of useless information, but whatever. Um, and then you have your spotlight control. Spotlight control, I also recommend do target hostiles. Um, target admin user, I've, I've never really dabbled with it, but my philosophy and my theory and the reason why I think it's in there is so that you can see how it acts. So you can turn it on admin user, meaning you, and then you can dip outside of the um, settlement that you built and watch the uh, where it goes and what it does that way you can place it accordingly you know that's what that's for but you always want to have your spotlights your trip mindset set to target hostiles and uh that's the usefulness of the computer there's a lot more that you can do with it sounds lights but for everyone that knows or maybe don't know you can only build so much if you notice in the top right as i just popped up my screen it says size now that is not the size of your establishment that is the size of let me rephrase best way to word it is that is your build bar okay the more you build the more that bar builds up some establishments a lot more building some don't so what you want to do is make sure you pay attention to that bar build your simple stuff first your prime shell if you will and then build all your indemnities or your fun stuff after that make sure you have a good core build because that size will fill up in Spectacle Island, as you can see, I have a huge establishment is going, going on here. We haven't even seen a lot of it yet. Um, and the build bar is only 80% full, maybe 85%. So some establishments definitely allow for more building than others. Some materials count for a bigger size portion than others. Like these little things don't count for much. Um, these don't count for much but the junk walls um, things like that they count for a lot so pay attention when you're building and you'll pay attention to that bar make sure you're ever vigilant of that bar now um, like I said before I like to use these doorways for my turret guns in the upper levels and I always have turret guns on the upper levels and it's harder for them to be shot at and easier for them to see out and then things don't get in their way um, so one of my scavengers I like to have them rolling around with rocket launchers missile launchers giggities Give your dudes weapons, armor. Um, get cool with the underground. When you get cool with the underground, what you can do is... Sorry, it's been a second. You can build... <clears throat> if you notice, my damage resistance on just a simple dress is 110, 110. The reason being, you can use ballistic fiber to create armor in normal clothing. Um, the underground railroad is who gives you that ability. Get cool with them off the rip as soon as you possibly can. Uh, Deacon's a good non-playable character uh, <clears throat> partner to roll up with. 
And uh, anyway, he's who you get from being friends with them. And they also give the ability to put the ballistic fiber into your clothing. And you can turn simple, simple clothing like I gave that guard. He's wearing the mechanic suit, but that mechanic suit is a damage resistance of 110, which is actually higher than a lot of armor you would find anyway. So, <clears throat> it's well worth it, and it's real easy. You just find yourself scavenging ballistic fibers. Um, up here, just coming around the corner, it's just my little above area above my Iron Man suited area, my little pool table down there. We've seen that, a little basketball hoop. Um, you can oversee the entire island from here. As you see, I got people wandering around. That's my postal carrier. Um, just a massive, massive establishment, but still plenty of room to build, so I digress. Um, come along here. Again, this is all fenced off, just so you can see down, and there's my little shop area. Now we come up top to the very, very top level. <clears throat> and what we got up here, always have an artillery. If you do have not got the artillery yet, get cool with Minutemen up to the point where you take the castle back. If you've not got to the mission that they offer um, to take the castle back, keep playing, keep doing stuff for the Minutemen. Preston Garvey, keep doing stuff for his veneers, and, and uh, it will open up. Once you do the mission for him, another mission opens up after that, and then you have the option to put artillery down. What this does is literally just, what do you think it does? It sprays artillery wherever you want it. They give you some uh, grenades, artillery smoke grenades. Just whip these guys out. Oop, that is not what I wanted to whip out there. And there you go. Fire, smoke grenade, and then... Oh, crap. I hope they don't start raining it on my water. But <clears throat> Anyway, that's pretty much the premise. You throw an artillery smoke grenade out, and they will fire shells to that location. Pretty simple and pretty cool. Especially for when you get it stuck in a lot of outside fights. So, up here... Yep, they can't fire on a friendly target. So This is also in the point of the game where the blimp's out. Giggity, giggity. Coming around up top here. I just have a lot of wasted space to be honest. Well, he's shooting anyway. Artillery just went off. You hear the artillery? Whoop! There it is. I really hope that doesn't destroy anything, but I'm not gonna save anyway. Regardless, so you come over here. I have a huge wasted area here, but uh, plenty of space to do whatever you want. And I mentioned earlier about the bar restaurant. You'll find that guy right chomp. So you come up here, I got a nice little outside bar set up and an inside bar in case it rains. Man, that artillery is just still spraying down. <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, here's my bartender. I always have a bartender in a tuxedo. Uh, I always got my dude in a tuxedo. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy up here. Um, I'll show you my other ones, too. I'm going to load my third character and really get into some crazy stuff. Like I said, this is still halfway of me learning how to do all this. But main concept is think outside the box you know think big think large scale but build small to start build what you need build your core and then get fun have some fun with it after that but the main important thing the rule number one in Darth Vader cool book is funnel everyone to you like the movie 300 bring everyone one way um, 